Hello everyone. Welcome to course Data Analysis and Visualization using Microsoft Excel that is MS Excel. We are into week one and in this week what we are going to learn we are learning here course introduction and the fundamentals that belongs to this subject that is Microsoft Excel. So we will explore our learning to understand the concepts involved with Microsoft Excel in order to experience and in order to practice this with the data analysis and the visualization that is highly demand in the market nowadays. So what are the table of contents for this week? First, we are going to cover the introduction to the course, how we can launch Microsoft Excel and how we can check the version that is already installed in our system. And then we will learn about the introduction to the interface, the basic interface of this tool, Microsoft Excel. After that, we will learn how we can enter and edit data into Excel. We will learn about relative and absolute cell references and then some common shortcuts. Formatting, we will learn how we can do the data formatting, whether we are changing the color, whether we are making it bold, italic, we will learn everything. After that, how we can customize the quick access tool bar. And then the most important thing, how we can get the help, the self-help from this wonderful tool, Microsoft Excel. Our learning objectives, by the end of this session, you will be able to launch Microsoft Excel and check the current version of Excel. How you can enter the and edit the data, you will learn in this week. You'll be able to use common shortcuts that are available with Microsoft Excel and then how we can format the data, customizing the quick access toolbar and using Excel self help. So let's start introduction to the course. So in this course, we have total 24 learning hours so that we are going to cover in total 12 weeks. So in each week, we'll have two hours for learning and you need to do your assignments and projects as well so so that you can actually cross check your knowledge so you'll be getting total 12 assignments for each for one week so if you're completing this first week after that you need to do your assignments once you submit the assignments only then you'll go to week two content and in this course we are also doing two projects one is minor project and another is major project so you need to do the first project, the minor project after completing week one to week six and the second project you will be doing after completing total 12 weeks. And you have the active support from the skill link for this wonderful course. This was the introduction to the course. So now let's talk about Microsoft Excel. How we can launch this Excel and how we can check the which versions Excel is available with us. So launching the Excel, the first option is we can write in the Windows search bar as Excel. Just see this screenshot here. So this is the screenshot with available. We are writing in the Windows search bar for the Excel. And once I do that, I'll get the option like this. So this is for this best matches with the Excel application. I'll click on this application and I can launch Microsoft Excel with this search bar. The another option is to go to command with run command. You can open the command promote with window plus R key also. And once you have this run window with the U, you just write Excel over there and click on OK and you can launch Microsoft Excel in that system. We have option three also and that is directly open the workbook. If you have the shortcut or if you have a location where Excel is launched or already or it is the shortcut is available, in that case, you can directly click on that and open the workbook. So let's try that. We already talked about three options. So what I'll do, I'll go with the first one first. So this is writing it in the window search bar. So just see there, I have clicked the windows option and now in the search bar here i am writing excel so once this excel thing is done writing excel i can see this application over the excel app i'll click on that and see 
we can actually open the excel good evening good evening so we will explore it how to open a book and everything for this purpose i am just closing it for now and come again the second option let's try that also what i need to do i need to press the key window window and then r so window r is done and i have this window with me type the name of a program folder document or written resource and windows will open it for you so i'll write here excel and i'll click on ok so again i have microsoft excel with me so i have launched it the third option again you can try it in your system with your location wherever you have the shortcut just click on that shortcut and open the workbook ultimately the result will be the same so this is your choice which option you want to try you want to try it with the windows search bar you want to try it with the windows command or you can just directly launch the workbook or the excel with the shortcut that is available with the installation so in my case i'll find this one as the easiest one next checking the version so how we can check the version like actual uh, version is installed with me in this my system so the way you just need to go to the file uh, we will see it also for now just understand the path go to file and click on account and then you can have the product information so product information what we can have it 2003 we can have words in 2007 as well 2010 as well 2013 2016 2019 or we can have the latest one microsoft 365 with us so uh, if i try this thing this like if i talk about my system in my system this microsoft 365 is installed so if i do the same option here in that case going to file going to account and then going to protect information i'll get the output like this and here i can have the information just see their product information microsoft and the subscription of the product this 365 and everything is written here so i'll do it in my system also so i'll just launch it with the windows option how we did that we just wrote it in the search bar of the windows and we got the suggestion for the excel app so what i'm doing i'm just clicking it home for now and i'll take the blank workbook also so what we did we just got the new blank workbook so for now we have learned how we can launch the microsoft excel and how we can check the version now once you have the tool with you so let's start with this wonderful tool this microsoft excel to do the magic with the data analysis and visualization so this kind of interface i'll get once i open my excel so what is this what is that interface so i have output with me so just see the first thing we will start from the topper one this ribbon is known as quick access toolbar so whatever is available that is you can easily access quickly access that is available on this quick access toolbar you can also customize this tab also so you, whatever you want to keep it here you want to have the print option you want to have the copy option you want to have the save option whatever you want to quick you are allowed to customize it we will learn it in this session only how we can customize that quick access toolbar also so this is this first thing in our interface is known as quick access toolbar then we'll try what we have in the second tab the second part so you can say that you have divided your interface in two three parts this first part is known as quick access toolbar where we have the all the options available that is easily or quickly available on your excel tool so you don't need to find it whatever is quickly available so uh, in some cases like we have some options like you need to copy it more frequently or you need to auto some more frequently in that case you can keep that particular tool on quick access toolbar and you can easily approach it in the second part we are talking about this is known as tabs and dribble so just see it here carefully the file the home insert page layout formulas data review view the smart view help power pivot this everything is known as tabs this is known as tab and when we have this 
line here and this particular one is known as ribbon ribbon so just see there what is written down so this is font ribbon this is alignment ribbon this is number ribbon this is styles ribbon and cells ribbon and so on we will see in actual interface as well we are just talking here with the screenshot available and then come to the third part this part is known as formula bar and name box so whatever formula we are applying on our data we can actually see it here whatever data you have you can actually see in this formula bar and the name box next part is this a b c d and so on this is known as column name of course you can have your column name as well but by default excel has divided the sheet the workbook into row and into columns and this row is numbered to 1 2 3 onwards and this column names are ordered with alphabetic from a to z and then it start with double a to double z and similarly so on so this is number of rows column name i have already told next come to the downside of this interface the bottom one and this bottom one is this part is known as worksheet and the status bar with which worksheet you are working like if you are working with the excel so you can have the same document with the multiple worksheets so it is not necessary that these worksheets are related to each other or not but normally if we talk about the logically in that case if we are saving for data for a one organization one particular organization so for different departments we can have data in the different worksheets so let's revise this again but this time we will do with the excel our systems excel so i'm launching it again in the same manner version check and the launching excel we already learned i'll go to the blank workbook first so just see this so we were talking about this interface till now what we have learned we have learned what the particular part is known as or called in interface so this top one this top part this green one you can say this is known as quick access toolbar and i already mentioned that you are allowed to customize this so we have some options here you just hover the mouse and you can see the tool tip here the symbol is for the save so save option is available auto save i need to on or off it is up to me you can make it for one particular file as well and for you can make it your default choice as well so each document you can turn on for the auto save then we have here copy we have here deletion for the sheets and we have some mouse mode also and the spelling check is also available so this is access quick access toolbar so easily available or frequently used items or uh, frequently used tools are normally kept in this quick access toolbar then we talked about this part from file to this clipboard clipboard thing so this is known as tabs and ribbon so file i'll go back home insert page layout formulas data review view help this everything is tabs and what are ribbons ribbons are this clipboard this complete set is one particular ribbon this font is one particular ribbon alignment is particular ribbon similarly number here i'll zoom my screen so that you can see it but okay uh, let's try that then we have styles here cells here and editing as well similarly if i'll go to one another tab in that case i have different ribbons here like for home i have different ribbons for insert i have different ribbons so if we talk about the tab insert we have ribbons for the tables illustrations add ins charts tours spark lines fil filters and this links comments and if i go to page layout in that case we have themes page setup scale to fit sheet options arrange if i go to formula tab i have function library here define names here formula auditing calculation if i go to data tab in that case i have get and transform data queries and connections sort and filter data tools 
forecast outline. If I go to review, then we have roofing, accessibility, insights, language, comments, notes, protect, and this link one. View, I have sheet view, workbook views, show, zoom, window, macros. And similarly, for the help, we have two ribbons. This is help and community. So for different tabs, I have different ribbons. So these all tabs and ribbons are actually having all the functionalities that is available with this wonderful tool that is Microsoft Excel. So once you complete this course, you will be master in using all the functionalities, whether it is available with different ribbon or different tab. So for now, I just want to have a quick look on this interface so that you should be aware where we can have this particular functionality. So this was tabs and ribbons. Next, this part is known as formula bar, Nivan formula bar. So whatever I am writing here, I can see that how we can enter and edit the data. We will learn in a few minutes. And this is number of columns. So this A, B, C, D, I'll, I'll scroll my screen. Let me zoom it again so you can have a clear view here. So this is this A, B, C, D, E. I'll go to my right part, right side of the sheet. So you can just have a look. After Z, I have double A, then A, B, A, C, A, D. This is the combination. And I'll go, go again, and you can see it. An N number of columns here. Of course, it is not N number of columns. We have a fixed limit here. I'll tell you that also. For now, you can have a you have a good good amount or good area to enter your data. Similarly, if I'll go to the rows, as we have Microsoft Excel in the form of the rows and columns. So this one, two, three is known as columns. So this is not necessary that you can't have your column name. You can have it. But by default, this Microsoft Excel is providing you space to enter your data in the form of rows and columns. This A to E onwards is known as the, the columns, name of the columns, default column names. And this is this one, two, three is known as the row number. So if I talk about I need to enter something here. So what I am doing, I am entering in C column and sixth row. So this is about the interface. And if I'll go down here, so here I am having the information about the worksheet number, workbook number. So which worksheet I am talking about, how I am adding sheet, I'll we will learn that also. So this is status bar and sheet worksheet bar. I'll minimize this with this minimize option. I am minimizing my tool and coming back. So we have learned about the interface, what we have learned about. We have learned about the quick access toolbar. We have learned about the tabs and ribbon. We have already seen the formula bar and the name boxes, column names as well, number of rows, and the worksheet and status bar. Let's come to the next topic that is entering and editing data. So we talked about like uh, we can do data analysis and visualization with Microsoft Excel. But before that, we need to learn how actually we can write or enter our data in this tool so how we can do that so there are a number of ways to do that first you need to click on the cell cell so what is cell i'll just go back to microsoft excel again so this area is known as cell a b you just see this cursor is moving this green cursor so this is known as the cell this particular area is known as cell so what we are saying, we are saying you need to click on the cell. OK, we need to click on the cell and type in the formula bar. Formula bar is this one. And here you can write ways to edit the data. So once you have the data, then you can edit the data. If you are writing something here, so this is entering the data. I have, what I did, I just opened my tool, this Microsoft Excel. I clicked on the cell. Once I click this, I'll have this line with me. So once I have this line, I'll write my content. And once I have the content, if I want to make any changes, this is known, known as the editing the data. So how we can edit the data? Delete and type. OK, so I entered something by mistake. So what I need to do, I need to delete it and enter the data. OK, the another way, 
is double click on the cell edit in the formula bar and then we have one option this press f2 also so let's try this so i'll start it from idly i'll go with the idly row one and the column one so i'm writing here i'll click here so i'll write this is my my first time my first type of data so i wrote this thing in this excel that is fine my first type of data so for example i want to make some changes so i'll click that i'll go to the formula bar you just see it here i'll go to the formula bar for example i'm adding here data and data so you can see the complete sentence in this formula bar do we have in the cell also let's try that i'll come out of the cell yes we have it there is no problem in that so my, my first type of data and data so this i can enter i'll try it again my first set of data i'm writing here if i want to delete this what i'll do i'll go to the cell and put the delete button the another way i'm doing control z that is the shortcut for the undo i have done the undo here i'm just reversing my the last change and i'm getting this again the one option is to delete this just go to the cell and click on the delete button the another way is to select the particular thing or maybe i want to delete this only first thing so i'll click this first and click on the delete button so this how we can actually edit the data how we can enter the data how we can delete the data or we can edit the data so we can rewrite it also when you are doing this and want to make some editing here so you need to click on the cell first to get the this editing allowed to yourself or otherwise what you can do you can from arrow from keyboard you can go to the particular cell and press f2 once i am pressing the f2 so i don't need to click on the cell i can have the access or the data and then i can make the changes or what will happen if you are not doing that suppose i want to make some editing or i want to add something in this cell this my set of and what i am doing i am just going to that cell but i am not clicking anything i am not clicking and even i am not pressing the f2 also and if i am writing something this will overwrite the previous content if i want the overwritten thing so that is okay what i'll do i'll go to the cell and i'll write whatever i want to write if you want to make the changes then you need to click on that particular cell go there and make the changes or the another way is to click on the f2 button function in f2 according to your system requirement and then do the editing so we have learned about how we can enter the data in the excel and how we can actually edit the data so this was all doing the dummy data entering what i'll do i'll take some original set of data i'm writing here maybe serial number here let's write the name of student name of student so what i am doing i'm just going to this particular cell and then i'm writing whatever i want to write in this data set now you just see that this name of student is crossing this content is crossing the width of this column go to the column that particular column and get this kind of a symbol and click on that so once you are clicking that automatically this column width will be set according to the size of the content i'll do the control z again the another way what you can actually stretch the width here or you can right click here and you can give the column width again so the three options available to set the column width the first option to do it automatically let it decide how much width it is required with the maximum size of the content that is written in that particular column click on that or the second option stretch it and the third option right click and click on the column width and give it a column width so this is eight written here let's do it 16 i'll click on that so i got the column c as with the width of 16 i want to make it shorter i can do it like this also 
so this is allowed we have three ways to actually give the column width similarly we can do with the row also i can make it much bigger the height thing i can make it smaller also uh, by clicking that and then the right click option you have the row height with you i can set the row height for now it is 14.4 i can make it 16 as well or whatever is the requirement and accordingly it may it can make the changes so we have just learned about how we can increase or decrease the row height or the column height so we have learned here row height and the column height serial number name of student then i'll enter some marks let's enter marks for physics then for mathematics and maybe your favorite subject i'll put here chemistry and let's have total here this the data entry now very good thing available with the excel is that at every step excel is actually helping us how it is helping us i'll write here one two i have total 10 students so how you're doing the data entry you'll write everything one two three four five six and we have 10 till 10 so this is the one way now you just think uh, you have records for 1 lakh students so are you going to write everything if you are not aware about the excel you need to write everything if you are doing it in any other tool like any word processing tool yes you need to write into it but when we are dealing with excel excel is actually helping us with the data so what you can do it you can just write two numbers here so one and two so that excel can actually learn what i want what kind of data i want to enter in this particular column so once you have entered that i'll select this one so these two cells are selected like this so once the selection is done i'll hover my mouse to the borders this border area of the cell this plus symbol will be converted like this symbol just see it again this was a symbol coming before i'll take my mouse to the corners or the border area of the cell the selected cell i'll get this kind of plus sign once i got this kind of cell what i'll do i'll hold my mouse here and stretch it to the down so you can see a tooltip here so automatically it has got the numbers you have not entered anything what you have done you have Enter the first number, you and enter the second number. And once you entered that, I'll just select the cell, the both cells. And once both the cells are selected, I'll hover my mouse to the border area of those two cell selection. I'll get this kind of a plus sign and I'll stretch it to the down area. So it's not necessary, you can do it in a column manner also, you can have it in this manner also. So I'll do this this way i can have multiple numbers for now i just want to have maybe a record for five students so i'll delete the rest of the numbers can we have any other format also i can do it with the alphabets also or not let's try that so for now i'm writing a and b here and doing the same thing so i selected this a and b and this plus is converted to this plus and i'm stretching it down so same kind of pattern is repeated here a b a b a b so if i'll do again so it will the same kind of pattern will be stretched the copy with the microsoft excel another way if i'm having maybe uh, i want to have the numbers like you can assume here 20 40 60 80 and 100 so now you just see we have the difference of what is the pattern for these numbers so this is a, a, a example situation it can can't be happen with a real life data you can't have marks for a student in this kind of a, a, you know difference for example we have this kind of a data set 20 40 60 80 100 can we do it same with the excel again so we have the difference 20 for each numbers so i'll delete the, these three numbers I'm clicking on the delete button after selecting it and now i'll try the same method with this 2040 also i am stretching it down or oh, and the great thing is 
let like we got the numbers to 20 40 60 80 100 now just think about you have these kind of a patterns you can identify the patterns you will give your first second or even in some cases you can give the third fourth number also and excel will decide that format and accordingly excel can have the multiple set of the data whether it is in the thousands or it's in the hundreds of data it this excel can help you out so you just think that your so much work is already done by microsoft excel so that is why there are this is the only very simple example that is why this microsoft excel is preferred when you are doing the data analysis or even for the data record purpose so i'll write i'll try something else here 3060 same method i entered the data another thing i'll try here maybe 40 and then uh, let's 40 again so we have three uh, here so I'll copy this. In that case, I am getting same 40 here. So it got the pattern and accordingly it provided the data. Another thing, uh, let's try with the weekdays, Sunday, Monday. So I'll write complete for now. Sunday, Monday, and same method I'm applying. Yes, we got that also. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Microsoft actual is actually right. This Excel is aware about the number of this day's name as well. Similarly, I can have it the complete seven days also. So I'll just do it for maybe more stretching. So you just see this more stretching. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday again. So the repetition is so going on. Can I do this with SUN and MON also? Let's try that. So I'll do the stretching again. Oh, great. So this Microsoft Excel, Excel is so smart to do this also. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, this short form is allowed here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Can we do it with the month name also? Let's try that also. So I'm writing here January, February. I'm again doing the selection part and going down. And you will amazed to see this result also. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and we can have December as well. Let's try it with the short form Jan, Feb, and do the stretching part here. Oh, great. So we got the short forms as well. So we'll keep the student's name as January. February. Yes, we can have these names also. Don't worry about that. So I'll keep my student's name as January, February, March, April, May. I'll delete the rest of the thing. So till now, what we have learned that this Microsoft Excel tool actually helps us with the data entering as well. So this F2 thing we learned how we can enter the data, how we can edit the data by clicking on the cell on that particular cell, writing in the formula bar and doing the clicking on the F2 key and then entering the data, deleting the data, overwriting the data. And then we learned about this entering or getting the help from Microsoft Excel to enter the data. So we can have that particular number here. We can have this table thing also here. For, for example, I am not aware about the table for the 13th table. So I can have the 13th table directly from microsoft excel as well 13 one job 13 13 2 are 26 13 3 are 39 similarly i can have it for the other numbers as well so excel actually calculated everything according the, to the pattern that is detected detected by microsoft excel in fact this thing is also available with the number of this name of the month and the name of the weekdays as well we can have it in the full form also and for the short form also. And similarly for string, it can do the pattern matching. Pattern matching in the sense, if I'm writing here ABC and then again, I'm writing here AA, BB, CC. So if I'm trying this, so how it is doing, it is copying ABC to the first cell and this again, this again. So pattern will be first 
second first second first second that will be repeated so whatever pattern is understood by microsoft excel accordingly it will generate the data set so for now we have this this data with us serial number name of student physics mathematics chemistry and total so this is just one very simple example so you can have your number of a good number of rows data with you whether you want to enter on your own or you can help have help from the microsoft excel functionality so this is all about entering the data in microsoft excel i'll come back to my screen so this we learned here next topic is relative and absolute cell references before going to that i just want to have a quick revision whatever we have till now i'll go back to my tool so we have learned about how we can actually launch microsoft excel what we can do we can go to this windows bar search bar and write excel here another option is writing in the window button window plus r and run you can write excel and launch the excel and then the third option is just looking for the shortcut for the microsoft excel tool and then clicking on that second we checked about the version also so how we check we went to file option file and then account and then we can check the which version is available with us then we learned about the quick access tool and then tabs and ribbons formula bar column names row names and this worksheet team and status bar then we learned about how we can edit the data how we can enter the data delete the data how formatting or the data pattern can be detected detected by microsoft excel and it can actually help you to enter the data